to be honest and say I know absolutely nothing about your field of study. Mm -hmm. How would you explain what your research is about to someone like me who's completely ignorant? Okay, so I guess as an overarching theme, I'm interested in atmospheric science and how the atmosphere affects our lives, mm -hmm. either by the biosphere or by precipitation or rain or the climate. So, but in particular, I straddle a number of different fields. I'm interested in the minutiae of atmospheric chemistry and physics. And so this really is of a laboratory looking very much at the detailed reactions. But I'm also very interested in slightly far-ranging subjects such as climate change, and in particular geoengineering is something I'm looking at during my, um, my time as a Birmingham Fellow. Um, I guess you probably want me to talk about, about geoengineering. Uh, well, I, I guess, um, yeah, I mean, what geoengineering is, is how would you just... Put, so there's a number of different um, definitions you can use. I think the one I'm most comfortable with is it's the deliberate attempt by mankind to alter global warming by kind of a proactive approach. So there's a number of different approaches one can take. Um, maybe the most simplistically, but also the most controversial, is solar radiation management. So mm -hmm. actually trying to reflect some of the radiation coming from the sun. Mm -hmm. So the sun's energies come down, hit the earth, and that warms it up in effect. And if we can actually deflect some of this radiation from even getting into the atmosphere, mm -hmm. then the overall temperature will drop, and this could mitigate against the temperature due to climate okay. change. Um, so obviously your research has massive impact, and what would you say mm -hmm. the kind of main benefit to society that you think you might be able to produce for your, from your research is? I'm very much from the environmental point of view, so um, I'm, I'm confident that some combination of geoengineering approaches will work mm -hmm. if we want them to work, but what we don't know at the moment is what the, what's the consequences, apart from, so the physics of the actual radiation is fairly well known, but what would be the consequences of the environment? And so the way I'm interested in looking at this is we don't want to solve one environmental problem by exacerbating existing problems or actually mm -hmm. actually generating new problems. So for example, something I've worked on a lot in the past is ozone chemistry. And one of the approaches to geoengineering is to essentially mimic uh, volcanoes and so introduce lots of particles into the atmosphere. And what we know from natural volcanoes is that you can actually generate ozone loss. Mm -hmm. You can destroy ozone for the, okay. via this process. And so one really big question for my research is if we geoengineered via aerosols or particles in the stratosphere, would this lead to additional ozone loss? And if it does, would the amounts being lost be acceptable or is it, again, just generating another problem? Mm. Um, so how did you get into this field then? It was a really fascinating field. What, what kind of inspired you from, say, your first degree into this particular aspect of chemistry? Um, so I've always been good at hard sciences, so kind of physics, chemistry, mathematics as well. Mm -hmm. And so that's my skill set, I would say. But my interests have always been towards the environment and the natural world in particular. And hence, so I found my chemistry first degree a bit dry. And so mm -hmm. ever since that point, I've been moving closer and closer to environmental science, but still retaining the skill set of hard physical sciences. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's just been a process of refining what I've liked with ex each successive jump. Mm -hmm. so. Um, so what do you hope to achieve in the next five years as a Birmingham Fellow? What do you think your, your kind of biggest output, or, or where mm. will you be at the end of five years? Um, as I said, I think it's really what I want to produce is a <laughs> a very strong assessment of different geoengineering options, again from this environmental point of view. So five years and one person isn't enough man hours to, to be able to solve climate change or understand geoengineering, but what I hope to get is like a very definite list of things that need to be understood mm -hmm. if we should ever really even consider geoengineering. Mm -hmm. And what's the relationship then with policy makers? Do you have any kind mm. of input into policy and how does that work? Um, so I've got a number of hats. I've got the fundamental scientist where I'm, I'm the lab monkey, as it were, mm -hmm. actually generating fundamental results. But then there's also this assessment work where I'm trying to refine the facts into consequences, I guess. And it's this, these type of reports which will then be used by the policymakers mm -hmm. and the social scientists. And at that point, it's me passing it over. Here. And I'm very interested in that side of things, but that's, again, not really what mm -hmm. I do. So. 
And so what attracted you then to the Birmingham Fellow Scheme? So you were in Cambridge before, what kind mm. of drew you to Birmingham? What do you, what do you think is the good thing about the scheme? I think it was the academic freedom and with this soft start. Mm -hmm. So you've, you're, you're essentially given a reduced teaching load. And as much as I enjoy teaching, I feel like I've done a lot of teaching over the last mm -hmm. five years. And it'd be really nice to consolidate my research now. And five years is a, is a, a good amount of time to tackle big questions. It's not mm -hmm. just a question of chasing publications. It actually gives me time to really attack big questions with respect to geoengineering. Mm -hmm. And how are you finding life in Birmingham? I'm not actually living in Birmingham, so I've moved to the countryside, so I'm a country boy at heart, mm -hmm. but what I've seen of Birmingham, and I've only been here three months, is it's been very nice, especially the campus, which I've seen most mm -hmm. of. And what about sort of life at the university? I mean, you've only been here three months, so perhaps mm -hmm. it's difficult to judge, but I mean, what's the big differences from where you've been before, and what are the best things about it? Um, so from Cambridge, it's very collegiate. And so your life is your college, and whereas in mm -hmm. Birmingham your life is your university. Um, and so it's been nice to really feel part of a school, part of a department. Um, it's nice to be on campus university again, mm -hmm. actually, so you can walk around green spaces just 100 metres outside your door. So it's been very nice. Mm -hmm.